elected 29 conservative school board members throughout Florida in 2022 because you can have good policies at the state level, but you need um, folks locally to also be helping. So my sense would be Iowa at the state level probably has the policy right, but some of these school districts or unions are pushing uh, their agenda in defiance of the wishes of the state. Yes. Good Lord. I mean, uh, talk about feckless leadership. Um, I don't think I, – I think neither likely would have happened uh, if we had strong leadership in the White House. Um, partially the uh, Afghanistan withdrawal, I think, greenlit a lot of people to do a lot of bad things. Obviously, Hamas would want to attack Israel no matter what, so it's not like that's only because of Biden. But I think what Biden did was he came in and he loosened the screws on the Iranians. So they got so much more revenue going into Iran, and when Iran gets that, they're going to export jihad around the world. So they're going to fund Hamas. They're going to fund Hezbollah. And I don't think that the attack would have been able to be orchestrated without – the aid and comfort of the Iranians um, and the regime there. And so in that sense, I think Biden has uh, really put us in a, a difficult situation. Um, you know, the thing about the Israel situation, uh, I'm a strong supporter of Israel. Uh, I have a great relationship with a lot of people over there. My state is generally viewed as the most pro-Israel state in America under my leadership, and I'm proud of that. Um, and we need to support them, but they really aren't asking us for much. What they're asking for is to just be in public and private be very resolute that they have a right to defend themselves. And instead of trying to undercut them and kneecap them every step of the way, uh, let them do what they need to do so that this doesn't happen again. And what they're facing is they're facing a terrorist group that wants a second Holocaust. You know, this is not just like some, you know, random skirmish that happened. Hamas would kill every Israeli if they could. They would end the state of Israel. Uh, that's their goal is to end the state of Israel. So we need to stand strong here. And also when I see this stuff on college campuses, you, you'll see this, like they're protesting in favor of Hamas. I think some of these people, you know, are really probably big problems, but I think a lot of them are just ignorant. I don't even think they know what they're protesting. Yeah. And, the, and one of the signs of that is when they say that Israel is somehow a colonial power, like, that just shows you, first of all, you know, these lands like Judea and Samaria, that goes back thousands of years, the Jewish connection to that. Look at the Bible. That is where this all happened. They're the ones, the Jews got displaced from that land. I mean, they're not just interlopers. So they've had a connection to that land for thousands and thousands of years. But then you look more recently, 1948, the UN had a partition plan, a Jewish state and an Arab state. The Jews accepted it and did Israel. The Arabs rejected an Arab state. And so they attacked Israel to try to destroy the Jewish state in its infancy, and they lost that war. Then they were preparing to invade in 67, and Israel preempted that. Then they invaded on Yom Kippur in 1973. Israel defeated that. Then they've done these intifadas for, for, for decades now. So they had an opportunity to have an Arab state. Uh, they rejected that, and then they've lost these conflicts. So Israel, in terms of this area, is disputed, not occupied, and Israel has the best claim of right over any of that. So to try to act like Israel some type of colonial power is just not true. Uh, I think it skews a lot of the discourse. And how is it that you have, like, the United Nations – a corrupt, useless organization, which, by the way, we will defund when I'm president because uh, I don't need them. But how is it that you have the United Nations, most of their efforts are, are used to attack Israel? And this is even before this conflict. Resolution against Israel, resolution against Israel. They have Iran on the Human Rights Council. I mean, it's such a farce. But you have all this opposition against one country – the world's only Jewish state. So that shows you the anti-Semitism that's out there. Um, and I'm a big supporter of Israel. You don't have to be. You can criticize is Israel's policies. But when you're turning a blind eye to all this other stuff in the world and the only focus you have is there, you've got to wonder what's motivating uh, some of that. So I think there'll be a new sheriff in town when I'm president. Uh, I think you'll see strong leadership. Uh, but ultimately, all these issues uh, are important. I think the one issue that, that is the biggest challenge for us is, is the deterrence of China. 
because I think they're the only country that really represents a peer competitor to us. Their economy is almost as big as ours. Their military is gaining on ours. You know, during the Soviet, uh, the, the Cold War, the Soviet Union, their economy was a fraction of the size of ours. And their military, you know, they had a pretty big military, obviously nuclear weapons. Uh, but from an economic perspective, they would not have been able to sustain a conventional conflict as long as we could have, uh, given our wealth. China wants to pass us economically and militarily. And if they do that, uh, and if they become the dominant power in the world, they are going to use that perch to uh, export their authoritarian ideology. And you will feel that as an American, and it's not going to work out well for this country. So uh, we still have time to prevent that from happening, but time is running out. Uh, that'll be a day one priority for us. We're going to have to rebuild deterrence in the Indo-Pacific. We're going to have to reshore some of these key industries back into the United States so that we're not dependent on the CCP. And we've got to get after their influence here in the United States. They should not be buying farmland or land near military bases. They shouldn't be involved in our universities. And so we're going to get strong on that. We're going to get tough.